Welcome in psychology students, Professor Zeeb here, and welcome to our short lecture on decision making with impaired emotions. So we're going to look at a uh, really tragic case for this one to kind of explain this. So we go to this gentleman, Phineas Gage, that you see on your screen there, his actual photograph. Uh, so it's a bit of a story. Uh, back in 1848, this gentleman, Phineas Gage, was involved in a very tragic accident, which we're going to use to explain the connection between decision-making and brain damage and emotional components. This gentleman was a railroad foreman in Vermont who was involved in constructing uh, the Transcontinental Railroad. And if you guys know your history, they would often use dynamite to clear the path to lay down the track for the railroad. So they would actually drill down inside a rock. They would manipulate a piece of dynamite to the core using this iron bar that you see him holding. It's called tamping. And then they would ignite the dynamite to blow it to bits so they could continue with the construction. So Phineas Gage apparently was involved in this process uh, with the dynamite. And as you can imagine, things could go wrong. And the dynamite ignited as he was manipulating it with the bar there. This bar shot out of the rock like a bullet, went completely through his skull, and landed several feet away. In fact, it was 75 feet away. This uh, huge iron bar landed. This thing was three feet, seven inches long, an inch and a quarter of diameter. In other words, a big piece of metal went completely through his head and landed 75 feet away. And amazingly, this guy survived. So, I mean, it's just mind-blowing to even think that he could survive something like this, especially back in the mid-1800s with the lack of technology and knowledge that they had at that time. So to kind of give you an example, uh, this would be the path of the bar. So this bar shot through his skull, uh, through his frontal lobe. In fact, on the right here, you can see his actual skull and the, and the exit point. Uh, this apparently is on display at some museum that you can actually go see. But what we're... Uh, really going to say here and mention is that the bar theoretically went through the frontal lobe, but more specifically some, an area called the prefrontal cortex, which turns out is very involved in decision making, but also uh, using emotional information to make these decisions. So let's take a look at what happened to this gentleman, Phineas Gage, who amazingly survived this. They noticed that after the accident, Phineas Gage had several problems with emotions. In other words, it was almost like that his emotions were almost erased. In fact, he showed little emotion. And if he did show emotion, clearly they were inappropriate to the context. So in other words, huge problems with emotions. Unfortunately, he could not follow through on long-term plans. So remember, this guy was a railroad foreman, obviously involved in planning the construction of the railroad so unfortunately that would be very difficult to do if you could not make decisions and so they found that his decision making was affected they also know his personality change and apparently before the accident this guy was very mild-mannered and popular very well-liked individual in society and after the accident it's like he became this other person where, in fact, women were told to stay away from him because apparently he would make these rude, sexually advancing moves on women. So they're just like, hey, you got to stay away from this guy. He's bad news. So it, it's not only his decision and emotions uh, being affected, but just his personality in general. <clears throat> Surprisingly, his language remained intact, so he could still communicate. Uh, they noticed that he used a lot more profanity than he ever did before, apparently, once again showing the personality and, and morality change that happened with this individual, but uh, he was still able to use language. So basically what we're, what we're going to do here is kind of use this example, and there's other many classic studies and case studies that the book talks about showing this connection. <laughs> between these two areas of the brain that we're going to mention here, the prefrontal cortex and the frontal lobe. And if you remember from chapter three, the amygdala right here, the small almond-shaped structure. So it turns out that we process emotional information in that amygdala. And the prefrontal cortex, which is involved with planning and organization of thought and decision-making, 
will often reference this amygdala when it makes decisions. So in other words, if we're feeling fearful or angry or something uh, you know, in terms of motion experience, prefrontal cortex will take that in and use it to guide its decision making. So in other words, we think that these two areas of the brain, two areas of the brain are really involved in our morality judgment when we have to make decisions involving moralities and morality type decisions. So we've discovered that when these connections are severed or if there's some kind of problem, we actually make we may make decisions without actually referencing the emotions. So going back to that previous example from the other video with the trolley example, a uh, person may find it no problem to push the person over the bridge because they cannot possibly process the feeling of repulsion and sadness and guilt of that that most people would. So in other words, it's just basically demonstrating that these two areas of the brain are very connected and we often use our emotions to guide our decision making. And if that becomes compromised, well unfortunately your decision making may possibly suffer and change. So this will conclude our short lecture here on the uh, evidence of decision making with impaired emotions, in this case with Phineas Gage. Please progress to the next step in the class.